very impressed that we're on the cusp, the threshold of some very momentous events. And uh, in, in looking back over 2021, we wanted to do a special dialogue with you. And we're calling this Pandemic Politics, Prophecy, and the Papacy. And we're going to be reviewing, Pastor Ross and I, just some extraordinary things that have happened this last year. We're going to look at them in the lens of Bible prophecy. And um, uh, we invite you to be calling in if you've got any special questions that you'd like to ask, or you can not call in so much as email in, or you can uh, comment on Facebook. And right now, you might want to text your friends and say there is a live special program streaming from Amazing Facts regarding a summary of what's happened prophetically the last year in 2020. And we're going to explore these things uh, and, and uh, also look ahead at some of the hopeful things ahead. But Pastor Ross, maybe before we begin, we should uh, start with a word of prayer. Absolutely. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we have this opportunity to be able to reflect back and, and look at some mm -hmm. rather interesting things that have passed this this year uh, and also see those um, those signposts, those way marks that mm -hmm. you have uh, placed for us to see where we are in the great stream of time. And uh, as we see what's happening in the world today, we know that our redemption is drawing near. So we ask your blessing upon this program and send your spirit not only to Pastor Doug, myself here, but those who are viewing this uh, around the country and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, Pastor Doug, in discussing um, some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, and we have quite the list, so we, we're going to be moving right along, but there was a verse that uh, came to mind, and uh, you find it in uh, Mark chapter 13, mm -hmm. and it's actually in verse 33 all the way through to verse 37. Jesus told a parable about a, a certain house owner or, or land owner who was going away on a journey, and he told his servants, I'm going to be gone, but he left instructions for them. And one of the things that uh, the master of the house said is, he said, watch. And you find that in verse 33 of, of Mark, Mark 13. Take heed, Jesus said, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. And then in that uh, parable, the next four or five verses, uh, the word watch is repeated four times. So it's been emphasized that again and again, Jesus says, watch, watch, watch. Finally, he culminates this parable in verse 37, and he says, what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Mm -hmm. So there's this emphasis of being alert, of knowing the time, seeing what's happening around us, and understanding it from the view or the lens of Bible prophecy. For these things have to take place. Jesus says these are signs of the soon coming. Yeah, and then of course in Matthew, he tells us that uh, you can sell, tell the weather by looking at the sky, it says, can you not discern the signs of the times? And 2020 has been, uh, you know, we've run out of broadcasters keep looking for new superlatives and adjectives to talk about. They see uh, it, it's uh, been a tumultuous, unprecedented, historic year. Uh, and it's been all of that. But, um, you know, more than anything, uh, as, uh, as these things are unfolding, I'm praying the people of God don't get used to the crisis as we're going through it. So if people have ever wondered, wonder what the world would look like when we e enter the last days. I wonder what the final events are going to be like. Now is what those final events are going to be like. In fact, um, I might mention to, uh, I think, Santiago, who's watching off the set with us right now, he said there's a free offer we're going to make available tonight of the Final Events magazine online. And I think he said we're going to text the word. I want to double check. Future to four zero is it uh four zero five four or four zero i don't know they're gonna have to help us with that <laughs> one pastor doug so anyway we got a free offer for you we'll tell you about this <laughs> came together very quickly for yes us. maybe san diego would uh let us know or put up a slide but we do have sort of eight categories that we're going to quickly run mm -hmm. through this evening of things that we just feel were very significant in this past year Pastor Doug, we started 2020 with all kinds of travel plans. There were great evangelistic opportunities. We were going to do meetings uh, around the world, literally. But everything seemed to be come to a, a screeching halt come around March of this year. Mm -hmm. As everybody knows, we ran into a global pandemic. And that's really the first uh, category that we want to talk about a little bit this evening is this amazing pandemic that we find ourselves in. Now, as far as pandemics go, this one is very widespread because it is around the world. But as far as deadliness, you look back in history, there were some other plagues that um, resulted in greater numbers of people dying who were infected than this. But nevertheless, this mm -hmm. is still a serious pandemic, and it's 
reshaped a lot of things in our world. Yeah, it's even, it seems like it's even more serious in the respect to how it has uh, disrupted the world mm -hmm. and altered history, uh, you know, economically, socially, uh, po politically, and just spiritually, just about every way that you can measure, the pandemic has had an impact. And uh, you know, I was in Australia with Karen when this first broke out. And, you know, we were right by China. And they began to implement some restrictions there. And we thought we weren't going to get home. And so, uh, yeah, we've seen, of course, just major restrictions on travel and gatherings. And it would never have we seen um, so much detail dictated by the government on, you know, uh, how big the group can be. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in the church or in the family, no gatherings above the weddings, funerals, mm -hmm. people died and they couldn't have a funeral. And so it was just, uh, it was very strange. And the reason we're bringing this to everybody's attention is because, you know, we're not wanting to do a special program on wine and pine, doom and gloom. We're wanting to talk about, um, you know, what does this mean prophetically? And we know that as we near the end, there's going to be an increase on political, government, and even religious control. And we saw an incredible surge in those things in this last year. Yeah, maybe we can, we can give some examples. I, I've got my cell phone right here sitting on the table. And uh, it's kind of interesting, Pastor Doug, a, a couple of weeks ago, I got an alert that popped up on my phone. I didn't sign up for anything. It just popped up somehow. And it says, you might have been exposed to someone with COVID. I thought, well, how would they know that anyway? Well, I guess there are tracking software available that can mm -hmm. actually track the movement of people through their phone, through the GPS, and um, they know where you go, who you came in contact with, how long you were in contact with that person. And we're just seeing these unprecedented government controls. And it seems like most of the people are accepting these things uh, because of fear, because mm -hmm. they realize things are different. There's a pandemic. Where are certain freedoms that seem to be, um, they're just giving it away in the name of fear. Yeah, I think there was uh, one politician that said, you don't want to waste a good crisis. Mm. Uh, and I think this crisis has been exploited by uh, political leaders and certain people in power to manipulate the masses to some extent. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not denying that this is real, but it's just human nature that um, uh, when there's uh, power that's available and control that's available, people will try to seize it and make the most of it. Another interesting thing connected with that is you've seen the past that I know I have, and I'm sure those who are watching have, have seen this as well. There seems to be a shift in uh, tension or at least a greater tension and even some suspicion of people that normally you wouldn't be suspicious of. For example, you go to the store and uh, everybody at the store is kind of looking at each other a little strange. They all got their masks on and every now and again you hear somebody grumbling because somebody's standing too close to them. Mm -hmm. Or if someone happens to sneeze or cough. Uh, you know, everybody looks as <laughs> if it's I some know. terrible thing that's happened. But, I mean, we know it's real. We know this, you know, this this pandemic's out there. But it's changed the way people interact with each other. You know, strangers would often talk, and you talk to somebody at the store, how are you doing? You don't find much of that happening anymore. I know. Yeah, I, <laughs> you just made me think about that. I, I sometimes struggle with hay fever. And I'd be walking through Walmart, and I'd sneeze or something, and then everyone look at, <laughs> looks at you like... <laughs> Uh, it's like you burp at a White House dinner. I mean, it's just <laughs> you, you feel really embarrassed and uh, everyone's self-conscious. Yes. And everyone's looking at each other, it seems, through a lens of what is appropriate and inappropriate behavior. Yeah, now. you walk towards someone and some people bump elbows, they kick feet or they bump fists and you, you're just, hi, hi, hi. You know, you don't know. You see an old friend or family member and you don't know whether it's okay to give yeah. them a hug. And, and it is, it's really changed things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only, of course, North America, but we're talking about something global that's really happening. Right around the world. So an increase in tension uh, that we find with social behavior. There's also, and this is amazing, Pastor Doug, an increase in online censorship. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it's, it's been couched in providing accurate information about the pandemic. Uh, but along those same lines, we begin to see more control over freedom of speech than probably we've ever seen before. Yeah, I'm all for truth. This whole ministry is about truth. Mm -hmm. But I think that the reason we're able to proclaim so freely is because even people who want to circulate uh, nonsense have that right in America. And when the main um, purveyors of you know, social media begin to say, we're going to pick people that will decide whether or not what you say is true or not, uh, and they start to censor you, Wow, that gives an awful lot of power to control freedom of speech to a handful of people. 
And it seems like there's a bias also. There's certain religious things, you know, amazing facts. On, I won't mention the social media giant, but on one of the great outlets of social media, we said something that Protestants have said for years about the papacy being identified as the beast, and they flagged it as hate speech. And we said it in a very nice way. But, um, boy, that's really frightening when they can start censoring you like that. And I think that's why we even mentioned this, Pastor Dags, because our message that God has called us to take to the world is the three angels' messages. Mm -hmm. In the three angels' message, it, it warns about the beast and about his mark and about the image of the beast. It talks about Babylon being fallen, being fallen. Not necessarily popular messages. Mm -hmm. And when we find freedom of, of speech being taken away, it's going to hinder the preaching of the gospel. And that's why we're concerned. Absolutely. Uh, we need to make sure that we can preserve these freedoms as long as possible. And then along the same lines, um, a lot of discussion about vaccines. Of course, it's just coming out right now. And yes, we believe that um, we need to do something and vaccines have a very appropriate place. But I think the concern is how rapidly these vaccines have been pushed to market uh, more than any other vaccines developed in the past as rapidly. And then also it seems as though some major companies are coming out, at least travel companies, saying uh, you can't fly on our airline unless you have a vaccine. Or evidence so that you've or been evidence, yeah, yep, right. that you've had that. So uh, we are taking things into a different realm that we've never had before. Yeah, and if they start saying that you can and can't go to business trips, you can and can't go to certain business places, it might even affect you can't come to this mall. Mm. I mean, we don't know how far it's going to go. When people are afraid... I forget who it was. It may have been Franklin who said that if people are willing to sacrifice their freedom for a sense of security, they will end up with neither freedom or security. Mm -hmm. And that's at the point I think we're at right now. Okay, well, that's just one. We have some other things we want to talk about. So that brings us to our second, and that is uh, social instability. And what a year this has been for protests, riots, um, tension amongst different groups, race tension. There's a lot that's happened this year. Yeah, in Matthew 24, where Jesus talks about nation will rise against nation, I think in the original Greek, it's the word ethnos. That's where we get ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the, the racial tensions and the way that those differences have been accentuated, ha have, uh, it's been inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just been a lot of anger and a lot of probably pent up frustration that just exploded into the streets. Now, I lived through, I remember... I'm just a little older than you, but I remember uh, the assassination of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, and the riots back then. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen anything uh, in recent history as we saw this year right. in streets, just as you flip the channel from city to city around America, the anger erupting and innocent people suffering for something they had nothing to do with. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we just... Uh, it, who can deny that this was uh, a big problem? And I don't think it's gone away. Mm -hmm. We've seen a massive surge. Now, this might sound interesting to some, but there's been a massive surge of gun sales in the United States in 2020. So that tells us, well, uh, people are afraid. Maybe mm -hmm. it's because of the unrest, the protests, the violence, the riots, whatever it might be in the cities. But people feel as though they need to arm themselves even more and uh, increase in gun sales and ammunition. Uh, one of the things that has sold like crazy this last year, <laughs> toilet paper and ammunition. <laughs> Those things have just disappeared off the shelf. So it tells us yeah. there, is, there is fear in our society like never before. Yeah, I, and um, it, it should be of concern when we realize that, uh, and this is, I think, something we'll talk about a little later, but a country that is so polarized politically mm. and in other ways and that people are arming themselves so heavily you just wonder if this is ever going to, uh, you know, mature into an eruption of violence right. in, in a meltdown of some sort. Mm -hmm. Well, then that leads us to another area that uh, sometimes has not been addressed, but we hear more of it today uh, in the media, and that is an increase of depression, divorce, drug use, domestic violence as a result of the shutdown, people losing their jobs, families struggling financially, just a lot of tension in the home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's terrible how this has been a surge this year of people not dying from COVID, but dying from violence, dying from uh, suicide. Yeah. People struggling with depression. 
Yeah, the residual suffering connected with these shutdowns and the economic challenges, and you and I, we're pastors, we've seen it. Mm -hmm. There's folks who have lost loved ones, they couldn't do a funeral, and the incredible depression. They couldn't get their regular grieving and comfort and families that may have had some marital problems without the space of being able to, you know, go off and shop or go off and work. Uh, you know, it just accentuated the problems and people who already had a proclivity to drink or smoke, uh, the liquor stores were open. Uh, and, uh, and I might mention at this point that, well, no, I'll save it. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's another, some of these things are interrelated. And of course, we're talking about the schools being closed, Pastor Dad, yeah. a lot of kids at home. I mean, for a whole school year, just about, they've been trying to do classes online. Yeah. They say the grades have gone down. It's been stressful for the parents because they're taking care of the kids. So just a lot of very interesting things that's happened this year. Well, then that brings us to the next category, and uh, this is economic uncertainties. Now, of course, when the pandemic began to uh, take place and we had the initial closings of business, you know, the stock market just collapsed and uh, there was great financial uncertainty. Now, the stock market has pretty much recovered the losses that it had early in the year, but there's still a lot of folks who are struggling economically because of this pandemic. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not a financial expert. I like history, though, and I've just seen that historically, if a government um, it just begins to print money mm. willy-nilly, billions of dollars, and um, they sort of artificially buoy up the market, not through genuine production, but they're just printing, they're just kind of injecting. It's like a sugar rush. You know, you can get a person that uh, is struggling from hunger, you can give them an injection of sugar, and they're going to rush for a while, but when that is over, then they crash. Mm. And we've had several injections of adrenaline caffeine, sugar into the s financial system, and it'll give you a temporary surge, but then there's a corresponding uh, dropout after that. And um, uh, that's a concern, is that, uh, you know, so many people haven't been working, people haven't been able to pay their rent. Uh, government, the, the, the checks that people get doesn't even cover a fragment of right. the losses of small business, it's, it's, it's a pittance. Um, and, uh, you know, it's almost like there's an artificial uh, our plastic um, reflection we're seeing in the market right now. And you just wonder, I at some point, we've got like two trains on the same track heading towards each other, and you're not wondering if they're going to collide, but you're wondering when they're going to collide. At some point, there's going to be an economic earthquake. And, uh, and it's just a fact of life that markets kind of go up and down, and when you get a surge, at some point, it, you can't have a boom forever. And so here you get people who are out of work and the market's going up and you're going, what's going on? And so I, I think that um, people ought to be praying about what this, the decisions they make financially. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I were talking earlier and it's, it's kind of like playing that game Uno where for a Christian, you want Jesus to come with no money left in the bank. Right. <laughs> you don't want it to all be invested in the market and have it go out. Yeah. You know, along those same lines, it's also interesting to see the other uh, dependency that individuals and families are having now who were self-reliant before, but they're becoming more dependent upon the government. Now, that to me is alarming. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. we realize the government is there to help and they play an important role, but when your independence or you become so dependent upon the government that um, without the government sort of uh, providing for you or, or sustaining you, uh, you collapse, it's a concern. Uh, mm -hmm. People, larger, larger parts of the population are becoming more dependent upon the government, whether it's for food, whether it's for housing, whether it's for health, whatever it might be, people are becoming more and more dependent upon the government. and That should be a concern. Yeah, well, ultimately, that's how um, socialist countries like, you know, the USSR and China and Venezuela, they, they get where um, everyone sort of depends on the... And then if people feel like they're not getting paid enough, the unions take over. Right. And we've got prophetic information that unions are going to have a big role in the last yeah. days. They keep clamoring for more and more rights and benefits, and pretty soon it breaks the piggy bank. Yeah. And then, Pastor Dag, uh, you know, all of our people probably watching, they were there as well. We heard news that the government might be, not the government, but businesses might be shutting down, the government shutting down businesses. And um, I went to the store, this is the beginning of the year, and I saw carts filled with spaghetti and beans and and uh, paper goods, and they were lined up clear to the back of the store and around the back. Mm -hmm. And I asked one of the ladies there at the till, I asked her, have you ever seen anything like this? She says, I've never seen a rush on, on food like this before. Now, fortunately, you know, uh, we made it through that 
rush, yeah. but it, it shows us how quickly things could be rationed. And I think you brought up the point, Pastor Doug, it's, it's one thing to run out of paper goods. It's another thing to run out of food. Yeah, the pandemic caused no food shortage in North America, but there was a fear and people were doing two things kind of controlled buying. It's fear and greed. Mm. And there was a fear that took over that what if. So even with the trucks all still running and gas in the trucks to deliver, um, we saw on the news people in the markets physically fighting over toilet paper. Right. What would happen if, heaven forbid, there wasn't fuel and the trucks couldn't deliver and there was a shortage of food or there was a famine? Jesus said there'll be famines in the last days along with pandemics. I would uh, I'd not want to be in one of these major cities. Mm -hmm. You saw what happened in mm -hmm. some of the looting and mm -hmm. it was just out of control. So definitely it's been quite the year for economic uncertainty. Some are wondering, are, mm -hmm. are we entering, you know, are we finishing up the seven years of plenty? Are we preparing for the seven years of famine? know for the situation with Joseph in Egypt but yeah we are living in some very interesting times absolutely and, and the reason we're talking about these things again friends is we're actually very hopeful we'll get to that in just a minute so stay with us all right the next category that we wanted to mention is natural disasters and this has been a year for natural disasters beginning with fires unprecedented fires in the U.S., especially on the west coast not just one state but multiple states on the west coast mm -hmm. fires in Europe some historic fires, I believe, in Spain this, this last summer. Of course, fires in Australia. Mm -hmm. Just uh, an increase in natural disasters. You've got the fires on the West Coast. You've got hurricanes on the East Coast. You've got flooding in the South. You've got tornadoes, uh, typhoons in the South Pacific. Uh, just global natural disasters. And uh, you kind of experienced firsthand these fires in Northern California. Yeah, d just a footnote is I was actually out in the front yard of our place up in Covalo talking to a friend when we saw the lightning strikes of the August fire. We watched it. And then and we s I saw little wisps of smoke coming up, and we knew that there was a lightning strike. Well, that happens all the time. Then about a week later, they still had not got that fire out because they were fighting fires around the Bay Area. And I was driving across the mountains at night, and I got lost and trapped in that fire. I shouldn't say trapped. I, got, I was able to get out, but I didn't know I actually did get trapped between two fires and mm. have to take a third way out. And that was pretty frightening. I put those pictures online, people saw. And then, um, and, and then that fire burned for a month. It became the largest fire in North America history called the August Fire because it started in the month of August. It was over a month before they put it out. Over a million acres burned. Mm. And then we saw them put it out. Uh, I was actually bulldozing during the fire uh, trying to help wow. create fire breaks so yeah, and the devastation you can fly 60 miles over that fire and never leave the burned area it's just unbelievable F beautiful forests mm -hmm. that are just uh, scorched and if nothing had happened with the pandemic or politically or socially or economically just the natural disasters this year would have made the history books but all these things there's been a confluence mm -hmm. and doesn't jesus say that at the end of time, it's not just the, the war and the rumors of war, but it's the confluence of these things so that they intensify like birth pains. Right. And the frequency seems to be increasing. The intensity mm -hmm. seems to be increasing. Another one we didn't mention, Pastor Day, is also some record-setting uh, heat waves across North America. Mm -hmm. In some of the, the cities way up in the north, New York and the like, yeah. during the summer. And then, of course, also in Europe and even in the, the northern areas of Russia, they were reporting some r incredible heat that is unusual that they have up there. So all of these natural disasters that we see happening in the world, yeah. they warning and signs. And the natural disasters come up a little later because uh, some political and religious leaders are thinking, now we can fix that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to save the world. And the disasters just, people say, yeah, if you think you can fix the climate by making religious laws, then let's do it. Yeah. And they're going to be ready for that. The next area is um, <laughs> polarized politics. And boy, was this true this year. Of course, we had an election, and it's been a pretty contentious um, election season. But uh, setting that aside for just a minute, uh, something very interesting that we see happening uh, is the makeup of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unique in the religious beliefs of who the, uh, the Supreme Court judges are. And I believe there's, there's seven Roman Catholics on the court and two Jews. Yeah. No Protestants. I know, and that's, uh, that's amazing because America was largely founded by Protestants fleeing religious persecution across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. 
and that we would slowly in the last 50 years go from where there are only Protestants on the Supreme Court to where there are no Protestants on the Supreme Court. You wonder if that's just a pure coincidence. Uh, or has prophecy said things like this are coming? And, yeah. you know, assuming that the election's not going to be overturned again, that uh, we'll have a, uh, the second Roman Catholic president. And again, assuming there's no immediate change, Speaker of the House mm -hmm. would be uh, another Roman Catholic. And so the most powerful positions in the country uh, are have suddenly shifted away from the Protestant ethics. You know, the interesting thing about those who are in these positions, these Roman Catholics, both the presidency, Speaker of the House, these are individuals that have been very vocal in support of the agenda that is being put forth by the papacy. Yes. So they, they're not opposed to some of the dogma, and we'll get to that in just a minute. They're actually actively supporting and encouraging mm -hmm. some of these papal ideas. So very interesting times. Yeah. Uh, also, one other thing related to uh, politics, and that is just um, how that we've seen so much commotion and distrust with reference to the election itself. It doesn't matter who wins, one side or the other is questioning how legitimate the election was. Yeah, whenever there's a, an election, there's a one side that's happy and one side that's sad, depending on who they were campaigning for. But the, the depth of the antagonism has seldom broke out into such violence in the streets. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for the last four years, one side has been contesting the legitimacy of the election. And now it looks like we're entering another four years where it's going to be contested. Uh, and um, that just, you know, that just really polarizes a culture. And for a, a, for a republic that's supposed to say united we stand, it's very unhealthy when mm -hmm. that happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here we get to the real heart now as we're talking about think some things closer to what we want to talk about, and that is the erosion of religious freedoms. I think this is one of the biggest concerns that we have. And for one, we've seen a global shutdown of public worship mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, yet at the same time, uh, the restrictions that have been made on public worship, uh, you've got, you know, uh, governments that are saying, well, it's OK to uh, sell liquor and even s gambling and strip clubs can be open. You can go to big box stores you know, that we have mm -hmm. here in town that are just jammed with people. Mm -hmm. And yet they say, if you come together, not only you're not allowed to, at least in our state, they don't want any gatherings right now. Um, and some churches are refusing to abide by that. It's a couple of cases have made it to the Supreme Court in the Central California. One church has over a million dollars in fines now because they continue to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet... Theoretically, you know, if if we were <laughs> strip clubs can be open, liquor stores and bars can be open, casinos. So if we were gambling, stripping and drinking during church, we'd be OK. <laughs> I mean, there's just something really wrong right. with it. But they say, no, you can't even sing. Right now. I'm not disputing that when there is a pandemic, you need to take extraordinary measures to prevent the spread out of love for your neighbor. What we're disputing here is the inconsistency mm -hmm. in how that's being implemented. And then also along those same lines, we have the government defining appropriate and inappropriate worship. Just you mentioned, you can yeah. sing, you can't sing, only so many people are allowed to meet, you can't have communion. So there's, there's some strange things that are happening where the government is beginning to exercise authority in areas where the government hasn't really exercised authority. Now, why is that significant? Well, if you look in the light of Bible prophecy, we see that increasing as we near the end of time. Mm -hmm. So that's why we want to emphasize this. It is, it is an interesting time where the government is starting to exercise more authority in religious things. And part of what concerns me is, and again, I'm not disputing that uh, everybody was a little concerned when you first saw the images coming in from Spain, Italy, and China of fo folks just spilling out of the hospitals dying. And we thought, wow, you know, this is serious. And they talked about, let's, you know, take a couple of weeks and flatten the curve. But as months rolled by, the idea that so many Christians got used to not going to church uh, th and, and uh, letting the government dictate when they could go. We have a lot of members in our church from Eastern Europe and they said, boy, this is very strangely right. reminiscent right. of what we are being told for your safety. Do not gather for worship. They said it's for your benefit. The children shouldn't go to religious schools. And and they always came off that it was for your benefit. And that just is a little unnerving when you hear um, the American government saying, oh, it's not. We love you to protect you. You shouldn't be gathering together for worship. Mm. 
You can go to the bar or casino. It just uh, didn't set right. And then what about Pasadena? In some circles, there's, there's been the government requesting records of people who attend church, I guess for tracing. Yeah, gets well, we had that here. You know, the health department was telling us uh, earlier this year, they said, now, if you're going to, once you do open up, we want you to keep a record. Mm -hmm. So if there's an outbreak, we know how to trace it back and find out who caused that. That's pretty eerie, is when the government's wanting you to take records of everybody that's coming yeah. or to be able to view the cameras in the church to see who was there in case. Of, and again, great arguments. You know, if there's an outbreak, mm -hmm. we want to track it and stop it. But it's still... But where does it go? Way. What's the next step? Yeah. You know, what's the next step? So very interesting. Um, we've also spoken a little bit about some of the impacts this has had on, on the work of the gospel in general, just missionary activity. I know as amazing facts, we have some folks who are overseas doing the work of missions, and they face some challenges because mm -hmm. uh, this is an international pandemic. It's made it harder for people to travel. It's made it harder for people to go door to door to do evangelistic meetings, public evangelistic meetings. So we've seen struggling in traditional forms of evangelism. It's become harder. Yeah. And, you know, praise the Lord, uh, our workers and uh, some of them in countries we can't identify right, right now have continued to be able to do the work, but they have to take sometimes extraordinary measures and do things through, uh, you know, r radio or Internet or publications and uh, but, you know, God's work, Jesus, his work is still going forward, but it is definitely, you know, we both had international trips planned and meetings, and that's all, all been postponed. Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, that brings us to our next item, which is an amplified papal agenda. Now, this is interesting, Pastor Doug. We have a, a, a health catastrophe. We have the pandemic on the one hand. We have the government extending its influence. We have people becoming more dependent upon the government. And then you add the papacy that is very vocal in a particular agenda, which seems to line up with some of the things happening in the world, natural disasters. Tell us about what's happening there. Yeah, you know, um, it's the old uh, uh, trick where you've got the shell game, they call it, where you put a you know, walnut under a shell or something, you start moving around, and they use the diversionary tactic. Mm -hmm. And the world has been so diverted by the things that have been happening connected with the pandemic that I don't know that everyone realizes that the agenda of the Antichrist has made great strides forward during this oh. time. And when you just read in, in the Bible what it says about last day prophecy, um, for example, I, I think it was kind of stunning when just in the month of December when the Pope invited 27 of the world's most powerful CEOs from North America uh, companies like you know Bank of America and MasterCard, Johnson & Johnson Visa, representing billions of dollars and trillions of dollars in assets, and led by the famous banking Rothschild family, they meet with the Pope, and they become part of this Guardians of Inclusive Capitalism with the mission to create a new paradigm for world business. Now, these are articles from New York Times. We're not you know digging this up from conspiracy websites. And they're celebrating that they're going to help kind of recreate the world. It says, this council will follow, and these are from the, the uh, Catholic website's own re news release. This council will follow the warnings from Pope Francis to listen to the cry of the earth. That's something we keep hearing. And of the poor and answer society's demands for a more equitable and sustainable model of growth. So you've got economic, and these businesses. All of a sudden, it seems like companies like uh, MasterCard and Johnson & Johnson, Google, mm -hmm. um, uh, YouTube, Facebook, they're welding more power. Amazon, they're buying newspapers. These companies are helping to mold uh, what people think. And I think that is a little bit disturbing. So you've got that. I think a lot of our friends remember when the Pope said that uh, on May 15, they were going to have a special global compact on education that was postponed. It was going to be at the Vatican until uh, October 15. Well, the Pope did have that meeting. It was more of a virtual meeting. And um, in that meeting, he gave, um, you know, an appeal to safeguard and cultivate our common home. Again, the environmental mm -hmm. appeal. Pope is kind of branding himself as the savior of the planet. And instead of using the religious grounds for making laws, they're using the environmental grounds because that, that'll bring in your atheists. Mm -hmm. That'll bring in your Hindus. That'll bring in... The, the Jews, the Muslims, everybody can buy into, well, we all live in this common home. And so how clever to use the, the fear about the environment 
to start implementing change in religious laws. And then on October uh, 10, the Pope met with world leaders and produced a special uh, TED meeting. And these are meetings where they used to emphasize technology and you know, um, education, and they called it Countdown. And the purpose of it is to build a better future by cutting greenhouse emissions by 2030. Everyone from Vice President Al Gore, former Vice President Al Gore, Prince William, and many other celebrities were there. And it's like the, the media thinkers and the leaders of the world are saying, we're going to save the environment. And then um, just uh, in December 4, the Vatican released a handbook of Adam Ekim, a 50-page guide for how Catholic bishops and priests can promote unity with evangelicals and other Christian denominations. A whole handbook on how to go about, and they, they announce it. So this stuff is, is just stunning, and yet you don't hear Christians talking much about what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And of course you have a whole movement that falls right in line with this, and that's giving giving the earth a Sabbath rest, called the Green Sabbath. Yeah. And of course there's a whole movement for Sunday, Sunday observance where you don't buy, you don't sell, you just rest, let the earth rest. And we even heard this at the beginning of the pandemic when businesses were shut down, people were saying, it's kind of nice, pollution has dropped globally. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we need to have some kind of day where we set aside, and of course Bible prophecy tells us which day that is and what happens as a result of this Sunday legislation. Out of fear, uh, for what's happening in the world, the planet, the economy, and uh, that are going to be seeing uh, a perception of the wrath of God, mm -hmm. people are going to turn to God, some out of fear. Uh, that kind of leads us into maybe some of the good news. Absolutely. And of course, even though this was a rough year, in a number of ways, <coughs> this was really an incredible year for the proclamation of the gospel. And that brings us to our final area we want to talk about. And I know it's, it's impacted uh, a lot of churches financially because the people can't meet together. And yet, it's a great opportunity to do evangelism. And the Lord has just blessed amazing facts uh, in a most remarkable way in 2020. We we're talking about this earlier, Pastor Doug. 2020 is going to go down as a flagship year in the proclamation of the gospel for amazing facts. Amen. It's, it's been an incredible year of opportunity mm -hmm. for ministry. So we've seen a tremendous increase in, in what the Bible says. So our Bible school enrollment at Amazing Facts has reached an all-time high of people wanting to study the Bible, wanting to know what the Bible says about the future. Yeah, just th the records have uh, been shattered when it comes to people interested online. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when we did the, the Revelation Now program, you know, we had just 3.5 million people yeah. that tuned in to that event. And uh, as you said, our, our online evangelism training just probably quadrupled. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, people are hungry. Uh, they're wondering about the end. People are searching. And so, you know, the Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds. It's also true that where problems abound, interest in the gospel and opportunity abounds. And so amazing facts, we've been investing more in new channels and networks and websites to get the gospel out than ever before uh, because we, we see the opportunities now as greater than ever before. And I might, you know, we were going to give away a magazine, a final events magazine, and our studio, if they're able to send someone in here, I don't want to give out the wrong information, but we have a way where people can download, they can text and download a free version of the Final Events of Prophecy magazine. Mm -hmm. And I hear footsteps. What's the word? Future. I thought that's what it was. Future and the number? 40544. Okay, so we'll give you a free copy of the Final Events magazine that anybody can receive you can just text the number or text the word future to five zero zero five four four one more time four zero five four 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 zero five four four now but if you're dyslexic we're we both dyslexic so we have our issues <laughs> here <laughs> it's one of those numbers front and back <laughs> yeah. all right so to text the word you, this is a great magazine you could even send the link to someone else people need to hear about the final events of bible prophecy and you know, Pastor Doug, maybe I want to say one other thing. You know, when we prepare these sharing magazines, mm -hmm. we call them truth magazines on different topics, right. final events. Um, we have to prepare months in advance, uh, even six months sometimes. We don't know, you know, what's going to unfold. But um, in 2019, we began to feel as though we needed to have a magazine mm -hmm. dealing with the United States in Bible prophecy. And so we started the work. And in 2020, this year, the magazine actually came out called the U.S. in Bible Prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's just flown off the shelf. Yeah. Folks have bought it to share with their friends. They see the evangelistic opportunity 
to take advantage of the time where we're living where people are asking these questions to provide them with truth. Yeah. So we've just mentioned two magazines that would be great sharing resources. One you can download right now for free. Just text the word future to four four zero five four four four. And um, that's the final events of Bible prophecy. And we have a new magazine. It's not online yet. But if you want to get these to share to you with your friends, mm -hmm. it's America in Prophecy. And uh, we probably put more energy and, and beautiful artwork into this magazine. Help get the message out. Absolutely. And you know, take advantage of your own personal situation with your family or friends, whatever you can do to share the gospel, because there is an opening. I was just talking to somebody last night. Uh, they mentioned that um, their son-in-law, who, who's an atheist, uh, has seen what's happening in the world, and he's beginning to think that there must be a God, there must be something significant as to what's happening in the world, and he's open to Bible studies. Mm -hmm. So I think we're seeing more and more of that, of people are showing an openness. They, they're wanting answers. They're wanting hope. They're wanting purpose. And of course, the gospel has the answers. Yeah, absolutely. I, we've never seen uh, interest yep. like we see now. So friends, I'll tell you, uh, it says, Jesus said, the harvest is great. The labors are few. Mm. I pray the Lord will send more labors into the field. And we hope that you'll labor with amazing facts. You know, right now at this time of recording, what will be the 28th of December? And uh, just a few days left in this year. If you want to invest in a special way in helping us get the gospel out through media, social media, television, broadcast, radio, then we'd invite you to continue to support Amazing Facts. And, and all they have to do is go to amazingfacts.org mm -hmm. and you can click com. the donate button and uh, invest in the kingdom. It's a currency of the kingdom. Now we have something else happening this week to help people get a new year, both for young and old. You want to tell us a little about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. You know, we thought it might be good to start the new year, 2021, uh, on the right foot, so to speak. And um, starting this evening, uh, December the 28th, there is a special program geared for the youth, but anyone can tune in and participate. It's called Recharge Your Life in 2021. We've got four presentations, some energetic speakers that are going to be sharing about 40 minutes. They're going to be sharing a Bible uh, truth related to um, revival, reformation in our own lives. They're also going to take some time to answer some questions. And that's going to start at 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, Pacific right here time. on this side. Right here. We'll have to clear out and other folks will come in. And it's going to be available at the Granite Bay Church website. I know it's also going to be at the Granite Bay Youth um, YouTube channel and Facebook. But just go to the Granite Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, Facebook page and you'll be able to view that live. It's going to be tonight, tomorrow, the next day, Thursday. They wrap that up and that kind of sets the stage for something else happening this weekend that we're very excited about. Yes, well, now tonight, I want to just mention that our speaker tonight is Daniel Hudgens, who is our AFCO evangelist. Mm -hmm. And you're really going to be blessed by his energy and his message tonight. And then that'll all transition into a special program. We thought, you know, we want to start the new year on a positive note in the Word of God. I, everything we do at Amazing Facts is about getting out the Word, living the Word, sharing the Word, seeing people saved by the Word, equipping people in the Word. And so we thought we'd begin the new year with the Bible. And we're having a program that's going to be called Reset. And it's uh, beginning with the Bible, beginning 2021 20, with the Bible. January 1, that's Friday evening, 7 o'clock. And we'll be coming, we'll be broadcasting from the church facility. And then Sabbath morning, January 2nd, Saturday, and that's at 11 o'clock Pacific mm -hmm. time. And then uh, Saturday evening at uh, 7 p.m. again. So Friday night. Saturday night, 7 p.m., then Sabbath morning. Begin the New Year with the Bible. Three presentations talking about finding the Bible, feasting on the Bible, and following the Bible. And uh, we trust that this will really help you begin the new year. Uh, you call it a weekend in the Word. Mm -hmm. And what better way? You know, I'm guessing, folks, that you're not going to be at too many New Year's parties. And so we think this would be a great way to celebrate the new year is just begin by being rooted in the Word of God. And so we'd encourage everybody to participate. And you can, you can view it on the Amazing Facts, um, the Amazing Facts channel, Amazing Facts TV. It's also going to be broadcast on 3ABN. That's Amen. Friday evening, Sabbath morning at 11 a.m., and then Saturday evening at 7 p.m. So 3ABN is going to carry it, Amazing Facts TV, Amazing Facts YouTube, and, of course, Facebook. So spread the word. We want to encourage folks to start the year right with the Word, with the Bible. I know uh, some of the presentations, uh, the titles of some of those presentations. I'm excited about it. I've heard some of these sermons before, but these are great, great sermons. So we want to encourage folks, tune in, 
you will be richly blessed by that. Now, Pastor Doug, we don't want to you know, end on a negative note, and I don't think we have. We've spoken about how the Lord mm -hmm. is blessed and uh, what's in store. We're planning some, some great evangelistic opportunities for next year. Uh, even if we can't travel as much as we'd like, we can still reach people through media. We can share through literature. But uh, we wanted to end with a verse from Scripture that I think is very encouraging for mm -hmm. believers. And uh, it's Luke chapter 21, verse 28. And this is what it says. Jesus talking in the context of end times. He says, Now when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. So mm -hmm. yeah, it might be scary on the one hand when you see everything happening around us, but we know that these are signs of the soon coming of Jesus. As believers, uh, we have hope. We have courage. We know how the story ends. We can look up for our redemption is drawing near. That's right. I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm looking forward to Jesus coming. Amen. And we know that just before he comes, it may get a little bad before it gets really good. Mm -hmm. But you hang in there, friends. Uh, the gospel is still good news. Amen. And maybe as we close this segment, Pastor Ross, would you uh, just ask the Lord's blessing on what we presented and people who may be watching, that they'll make the Lord first in their lives. Absolutely. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you've been with us this past year through its ups and its downs and uh, the challenges we faced. But Lord, you've also opened up great opportunities for evangelism mm -hmm. and sharing the gospel. And Lord, we want to pray for those who are viewing this. Um, they've also gone through their own personal journey this past year. Some have faced some real trials, uh, whether it be with health or family or finance. Mm -hmm. um, but Lord, we pray that you would continue to sustain them, encourage them. And may we not uh, grow fearful, but rather may our faith grow knowing that you're in control and that you are promising to make all things new and blessings for those who put their trust in you. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we thank you for the way you've blessed the ministry, and we pray that you continue to guide us and provide the resources needed for the proclamation of the word, not only through this ministry, but through your church and through the many other ministries, mm -hmm. preaching the three angels' message around the world. So thank you, Lord. We ask your blessing upon tonight's meeting, as well as what's going to be happening the next few nights and in a special way this weekend as we start 2021 in your word. So thank you, Lord, for hearing.